So for this drill, what we're doing is playing in threes. The most important thing is that Yoav and I create good angles between each other. As a center midfielder, the most important thing is to create proper angles between you and your teammates. So basically what we're trying to do is hit the front foot of our partner, of our teammate, the entire time. So we start two touch here. Obviously, like I said, most important thing is create a proper angle take a look behind you before you get into your space and then play the ball to your teammate. As always, start slowly, play properly to your partner's front foot and then as you get better, you can start to ping the ball even more. Five. Okay. And right shoulder, eight. Good, seven. Okay, right shoulder, four. Two. That's it. Right shoulder, eight. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing the same exact thing here, but we're playing in one touch. So even more important here is trying to play to the right foot, the correct foot of your partner, so he can play the ball to the third man. So for this drill, it's very, very simple. We have six walls and all you're doing is you're playing six to the right and then you're coming back six to the left. Like I said before, you're trying to go backwards and sideways to create yourself a nice angle and you're trying to play the ball with pace, obviously always looking over your shoulder, calling out the number. So for this drill, you're using the iPad to dictate your action. If it's one to four, you're going to the right. If it's five to eight, you're going to the left. Seven. Good. So the way that you want to train your passing as a midfielder is you always want to play to the correct foot of your teammate where he is going. You want to take a proper touch in the direction you want to go. You want to try to lean on that ball. And then obviously you want to strike through that ball with the inside part of your foot, playing that ball with pace. Like I said before, it's very, very important to create a proper angle 
for your teammate to play the ball. Usually you want to be in a diagonal relation to him. You never want to play a square ball, especially in training, because you do not want to do that in a game. And as you always say, the most important thing is to train how you play in that proper intensity and you want to build the right habits during training so you can bring that over to the game. Also during training, I want you to make sure that you're using both feet equally. Many, many people ask me if I'm a right or left footer, and I always take that as a compliment. I never used to have a good left foot until I started training it. Every single day in training, I would do double the reps on my weak foot that I do on my strong foot, and it's developed quite nicely. And another thing I would love to add is I found a very, very interesting point that Michael Lewis Cunningham put on an interview with him and Become Elite when asked the difference between semi-pros and pros. And he said that no matter what ball a pro player would get, whether it's bobbly, whether it's perfect on the ground, whether it's in the air, that player would be able to deal with it. So I've been guilty and a victim of this myself that in training, I would want to play perfect passes all the time. But now I've learned over the past couple of years, the most important thing is being able to adapt to whatever pass that you get. So for this drill, what we did is as soon as I saw my teammate get the ball, I would run into the space, into the square. As you see, there are eight squares there. And based on what the iPad says, dictates the place that I run into and then the goal that I play into. I don't know if you see so correctly, but all the goals are numbered from one to eight. So based on that number on the iPad, you run into that square, get into that position. Like I said before, trying to get in a diagonal way with your teammate. And then you want to take the touch in the direction of the goal that is numbered on the iPad. And you want to play into that goal. So I wanted to replay what I did there so you could notice my action. Instead of constantly going through the motions and training, you wanna make every single rep as game realistic as possible. So what I did is I put my hand up to stop and I let him know when I was ready, when I can make a sharp dynamic movement to the ball and make it as game realistic as possible. So instead of going through the motions in training, make every single rep as game realistic as possible.
me walk you through this entire gym session. Started off with an A skip for about 10 to 40 yards. I was pretty warm already from the training, but I wanted to get some more reps in. A lot of this speed work over this off season, acceleration is the ultimate goal. Then I went on to a right legged A skip and then on to a left legged A skip. This is all about rhythm and coordination. Then I went into some backwards hip swivels, which is very, very good to dissociate the upper and the lower body, and of course, open up those hips. Then I went on to some hamstring kicks, really, really excellent for the mobility of the hamstring, some nice active mobility, as well as opening up those hips. Then I went into some more active hip mobility, some backwards open the gate, really, really love this one as well. This is also about rhythm and coordination. Then I went on to some lateral stuff, started off with some forward lateral bounds, sticking the landing each time I land. And then I went on to some forward bounds, focusing on being springy and elastic as I move forward. As you see, it's a very, very slight knee bend and you're on the ball of your foot the entire time. Then to ramp up the CNS a little bit before I got started, I did some high knees. Then I went into some vertical bounds using a band just for some overall assistance. And as I've spoken to you about this before, you want to try to exude minimal effort. As much and as weird as it sounds, you want to try to move off of your elastic energy off of your tendons because that's what plyometrics is all about spending as little time on the ground as possible trying to produce as much force and power as possible but trying to really use that energy built up in your tendons as you see here then i went on to some barbell high pulls it's just a bit of a hinge so i'm going to pick it up in a snatch base grip so wider than normal and you're gonna hinge back like you're doing a bit of a deadlift and then you're gonna pull that bar up. Then I went on to some above parallel pin squats. As you see here, set up some pins. And like I spoke about in the beginning, I'm really focusing on acceleration and overall starting strength for me as a footballer. So the main goal here is to just produce as much strength from that position as possible. Then I got onto some slow lowering, which is very, very good for overall tissue tolerance, overall muscle tolerance, especially on that working leg in the quad, the hamstring, and the glute. And all you're going to do is slowly lower down. You can balance yourself at first. And then as soon as you hit that ground, tap your heel and try to be as explosive as possible on the way up while staying balanced and overall in your body. So as you see here, you're just lowering very, very slowly, trying to sit back with your butt. Very, very good for knee health as well. Then I went into some calf raises in a vertical fashion. So a little bit of knee over toes calf raises, trying to create a long lever with the body. And then all you're trying to do is use those calves. Then I went into some straight legged hamstring bridges. Obviously, as the name entails, very, very good for the hamstrings hits the glutes as well. And yeah, it was really an excellent session. Hey, what's going on homies? How we doing? Hope you're doing well. But I wanted to answer a question that I got in my last video for today's continuous Q&A. The question was from Yousef6. Hey, let's go my guy Rick. This might be a silly question. Can we have a story of how you started your online coaching business? And my guy Yusuf, it's not a silly question. I see that you support all my content on every platform, so I appreciate you, and I'm gonna answer your question. How did I start my business? It's no scientific formula, nothing very extravagant, like I tell you guys and girls all the time, you just gotta do. You just gotta put in the reps. And the way I started was in, I think, 2017 in Sweden. I train a lot, as you guys know. I was training back then, and I still do now, in the off season especially, five to six days per week, twice per day. So what I said to myself is, let me get myself a camera. I'm gonna start recording every single one of my workouts, and then let's get this started. That's when I first discovered Instagram. I saw there were so many trainers posting content that wasn't good. People posting content about how to lose belly fat by using a 
belly wrap, by using a pill, by using teas, or whatever it is. And as you know, I'm not about that at all. I'm gonna tell you the truth from day one, and that's what I do with my clients right now, that's what I do with all of you, because the truth is what wins in the long run. It might hurt in the short term to hear the truth, to hear that you're doing something wrong, you're not doing this right, this is a shortcut, this is some hack that you've learned on the internet, that's not the right way to do it. And what I fully believe the right way to do things is smart and hard work, consistently, every single day, doing everything with a purpose and a why, and really, really applying yourself, that's what gets results. There's no quick fixes, no shortcuts, to any long-term success that you want, that I want. So I started my own business by recording all the videos, all the exercises that I did myself. And then what I wanted to do was help other people. I've been a personal trainer since I'm 17. I was training people in person since I was 16 and I was doing all of it for free in the beginning for about two years. That really helped me learn things. Like Gary Vee says all the time, if you wanna do something and you're not an expert in it yet, do it for free and you will learn by doing. So I learned all the stuff that I needed to. And as you know, I study this stuff. I've studied this stuff for about 10 years, 11 years obsessively because I love helping other people. I love helping people who are like-minded like myself, who want to get to the next level, whether it's in football, whether it's in their body, in their mind, to improve their business, to improve their relationships. I love people when they're happy with their results. And I really, really strongly believe that the most important thing is your health. As we've seen through this last couple of years, what's been going on, health is the most important thing. You could always make more money, but you can't get your health back. So I started my own online business for that reason, because I really believe when you put in that extra work and when you really, really want it as bad as you say you do, you can get there. So basically what I did was right now I have about 4,000 to 4,500 videos on Vimeo. And when a person sees that they like my content, that my free content that I put out on Instagram, here on YouTube, on podcast, on TikTok, on Snapchat, on my blogs, wherever I post my stuff, when they see and they trust me that I have some decent knowledge and I know a little bit about this stuff and they want personalized approach and a personalized access to me, then they can sign up for my coaching. And what they do is they go to the link in my Instagram bio here on YouTube, they go to my website, they apply, they let me know why they think they'll be a good fit for my program. And then based off of their application, I will choose if I think they'll be a good fit. And not everyone's a good fit. Most of the people that apply, I don't accept because it's a very hard program and it requires a lot, a lot of dedication, consistency, and commitment. And people might think that it's just easy to apply to some coaching program and get proper results. But for me, the most important thing is to develop a good relationship with my client so I can get them proper results. So I require at least a six month commitment from all my clients and we begin this journey together. Whatever their goal is, I would say about 90% of my clients, 95% of my clients are footballers. So their goal is to get to the next level, whether it's make their high school team, make their club A team, make their college team, play professionally, whatever they wanna do, that's what their program is gonna be revolved around. Obviously, it's based on their goals, their training experience, how old they are, where they currently are in the season, and I make a personalized gym program for them, a personalized nutrition program, I help them with sleep and recovery tips, I deliver new videos every single week so they can learn and apply this to their life in the long term. Like I said from the beginning, my program is a long term program. It's not a short term, quick fix, temporary solution. I wanna teach them everything that I've learned in 11 years in six months. And the way I do that is slowly drip content to them through email, maybe we get on the phone, text messaging, whatever it is, they have full access to me and my goal is to help them reach their goal. They come to me for results, 
So my job is to deliver them results. As I always say, my results are their results. So I wanna help them reach that next level. And many of my clients, I think the main reason that they like me is because I'm straight to the point. I had a client the other day, he sent me some pictures. We've been working together for a couple months and I said to him, dude, how have you been on your nutrition? How have you been on your diet? Because for, he came to me for some body composition results, obviously as well as performance results. For me, the most important thing is performance. But in terms of body composition, he wasn't hitting those goals. And I said to him, dude, you came to me for results. We really, really got to clean up this diet. You got to stay more accountable. All my clients, they Snapchat me every single meal to keep them accountable. And he hasn't been Snapchatting me the meal. So it's just, it's just that simple. If he doesn't, if you don't do the process goals, if you don't Snapchat me the meals, if you don't take care of your nutrition, you're not going to hit those body composition results. I know I've gone on a long winded answer here, but the way I started my business was very simple. You just get in reps. I got a camera and then over time, it's been about five years, I've developed a pretty decent business and I try to provide free content to every single one of you to help you reach the next level. My goal is to help every single footballer who wants to reach that next level or any person who wants to reach their next level in mental and physical fitness and on the pitch, I wanna help them get there. So yeah, it's a long winded answer. Thank you so much for asking it, Yusuf. I'll see you in the rest of the video. Ethiopian food. close out this video thank you so much for watching I really really appreciate it I hope you gain value out of this video if you have a specific question for me please drop it below in the comments so I can answer it in the next video in the next continuous Q&A thank you so much for your support on every piece of content I put out please let me know what you think of the YouTube videos what you think of the two times per week upload schedule please hit that like button please hit that subscribe button please let your friends family your cats your dogs know about my YouTube channel because I'm really trying to grow this community make it bigger and help every single footballer around the globe reach their genetic potential have a good rest of the day we will talk soon deuces